I really hate rear view mirrors. I mean, I, I can see that they are very useful. It's not the Italian way of driving like in the Gumball Rally. And now, my friend, the first rule of Italian driving. What's behind me is not important. But in this car at least, and in many other cars, they really obstruct my view. So traffic lights, I usually have to look around them. So uh, they are not built for tall people. Maybe they, they should make rear view mirrors like they had in those Nike old cars that had them like down there. But then you have the problem that you cannot really see out. Maybe with LCD screens, we get rid of the rear view mirror in that position. And maybe we get it in some better position that doesn't obstruct your view. Ciao, this is Mario, a Swiss car guy on YouTube, and welcome to another low effort video of me driving around in my 2008 Lexus LS600H. An interesting thing about, I think, pretty much all Lexus LSs, because even my LS430 did that, is that when you have fully extended the steering column, if you tap the button, it does extend another little bit, like and I think that half a centimeter, or um, how much it is, it makes a bit of a difference to me and makes for a more comfortable driving position. But you cannot um, save it in the settings. It's just an extended position that you can activate manually. First, I want to thank everybody who commented on my last video, where I was a bit lost, where I didn't know exactly what kind of videos to do in the future. And I'm very grateful to all of you because I got a lot of positivity back. Even people always say, oh, the comment section on YouTube is terrible. In my case, I think it's great. You're all great people. There were some very interesting suggestions. Some are more involved than others. In the meantime, I will continue doing low effort videos. So at least I have some videos I can churn out. And these low effort videos are mostly going to be my opinions. Then again, I think the whole channel is pretty much my opinion. But I just wanna, wanna touch on some subjects that I have an opinion on and I have opinions on subjects. So today's video is going to be about new cars. I mean, not like new cars that have come out, but buying new cars and why I personally do not buy new cars. Ah, come on. Damn it, I should have driven. I should have driven. Why didn't I drive? There's this thing with traffic lights. When they turn yellow, should you drive or should you stop? In my experience, stopping is never the right option. And I always regret stopping it. But, you know, going for it when it turns yellow can be a bit risky. And in some cases, it can be a bit costly. In Switzerland, I think running a red light and there's two tiers of running a red light. There's like running a red light within, you know, a fraction of a second of the light turning red. And then there's running a red light like seconds after it turned red. They are different punishments. So the, the fractional one is like 250 francs and the, the, the later one is 500 francs punishment or a fine if you want. Also, I don't know how well you can hear it, but there is a clunk coming from the rear. Well, a clunk, a rattle coming from the rear. It's not a suspension issue, but this car has had the rear air struts replaced by the previous owner. And as he told me himself when we went for a test drive, is that, well, they did never really fix the parcel shelf. What's it actually called? The shelf at the very back. They didn't really fix it properly. They didn't fixate it properly. And I went like, yeah, don't worry, I'll do it myself. And I never have. Therefore, if I drive over like some rough roads, there will be a rattle from the back in my otherwise technology is supposed to work. If it doesn't work, it's useless. And I hate useless technology. So the reason why I don't buy new cars is actually quite simple. It's because I'm broke. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. And nah, just kidding. I'm not really broke. I mean, I tell my boss constantly that I'm not making enough money at my job. Of course, because I'm not. But all in all, I'm not doing too badly for, you know, a single guy living alone and not having to finance an entire family. So 
it's not really because I don't have any money, but I think a new car is too expensive. If you've seen my previous cost of ownership videos, you will always see that a part of the cost of ownership of the car is a depreciation of the car. And the newer your car is, usually the higher the depreciation is. As you know with most things, but especially cars, they depreciate the most at the very beginning. They say your first mile or kilometer you've driven is always the most expensive. But it's, it's true because that's when your car is most valuable. So these first few years are going to be the years where the car loses most of its value. My point in case is this Lexus. This had, I think, a sticker price in 2008 of like 160, 170,000 Swiss francs. I bought it 10 years later for 19,000 Swiss francs. And of course it's used, but I mean, is it 140,000 francs less of a car than before? And I think it isn't. Well, you might make the point that instead of buying these depreciated old Luxo barges, I could just buy a new compact car, like a reasonable car. And I would argue that yes, I could, but I think you should compare apples to apples. Of course, if I drove a Fiat 500 or something like this, yeah, even new, that car would cost me considerably less than this car cost me as a used car with all the depreciation that's still going on and with all the repairs and costs of running. But then I'd be driving a city car and not a comfortable, powerful luxury car. I think these comparisons should always be made with the same kind or same class of car. Because I could also buy a used Fiat 500 if I wanted one and then it would be even cheaper than buying a new one. So there's that. I'm, I'm, I'm a cheap person. I don't like to spend a lot of money. It's not like I love my money, I want to take it to the grave, but I do have some plans. And one of those plans is basically, I want to buy a house at some point. And in Switzerland, houses are incredibly expensive. I mean, really, and they have gone up even more now during the pandemic because people are staying at home. So it will be a while before I can afford a house. In Switzerland, usually when you buy a house, you always mortgage it. So there's very rarely people who don't have a mortgage on their house, because also from a taxes point of view, um, having a mortgage on your house means that you have some debt and debt you can detract from your taxes and it works in your favor. So basically most people still have a mortgage on their house, even if they're rich. And in Switzerland, in order to be able to buy a house, I mean, for the banks to finance you the mortgage, you have to put up 20% collateral. So 20% of the house's price, you have to pay yourself. And then you have to earn enough so that they can calculate that you will be able to afford the mortgage. And that means um, that looking at houses, even in, in the middle of nowhere, Right now is a bit difficult because prices are really high. So personally, I'm budgeting if I have to buy a house to spend about 1 million Swiss francs, which is about current exchange rate, about 1.1 million US dollars. And don't misunderstand me. That doesn't buy me a palace or something like that. That buys me a modest house. And I'm a bit particular when talking about houses because I want a single house. I don't want a house that's joined with another. I don't like that because I want to be on my own. I want to be able to make noises in the night whenever I want to be able to take a shower without upsetting any neighbors. So I want a single house and that makes things a bit more expensive, but it's what I want and it's going to be really expensive, which means I need about at least 200,000 Swiss francs in cash as my own collateral that I bring up because otherwise no bank is gonna finance it. Then, just because you have come up with the 200 grand of collateral, doesn't mean the bank will finance you the rest. Because you see, banks, when they calculate your ability to be able to pay back the mortgage, um, they calculate with an interest rate of 5%. And if you follow the financial markets a little bit, you will know that interest rates on mortgages, right now they are about 1%. If I made a mortgage today, I could probably make it fix, fixed interest without any risk for 10 years for about 0.9%. Yet the bank calculates with 5%, which means I would have to pay more than five times as much in interest than I actually have to pay. 
in their calculation. So I, even though I, I earn okay, I'm single, I don't have a family, I'm actually not able to finance 800,000 Swiss francs. And I wonder who actually is, but according to the bank's calculations, I cannot finance that much money. So either I get more money, which means more collateral, which means I have to save even more money, or I have to find a cheaper house. And the cheaper house thing is not going to work right now because prices are so high and actually it doesn't look like they are coming down. So if I have to buy like a stupid small house that's attached to another house, no, I don't want that because I want a single house where I can do whatever I want and I want a bit of space for the cars. I think what every car guy wants is basically a garage they can live in. So yes, buying a house is going to be very, very capital intensive. And for that reason, I don't really have the luxury to spend money on a new car, knowing that a lot of what I spend for the car will go away in depreciation. Then again, I'm not basically against buying new cars. I mean, if you have the money and you want a new car, by all means, buy a new car. Because first, I mean, New cars come with warranties, which is awesome. Often they come with uh, service packages, meaning you don't have any additional costs you're taken care of in case of something going wrong. And the second is, if nobody buys new cars, ah, where do I buy my used cars from, right? But then again, there's the saying that if nobody buys new cars, the car manufacturers will start making used cars. Of course, in ecological terms, I think the, the most green car you can drive is the car you already own. So drive your car, a car that's already been produced, a car that's, that has had energy put into it to, to be built, drive that as long as you can. Because that is ecological. Like if this car stays on the road for 30 years, that's way more ecological than if I buy like a new green car and then after 15 years it gets junked. And this is another reason why I personally like driving older cars. I mean, sure, it's not my primary goal, but I think it is ecological. Even if it is a V8 or if it is a Nissan GTR or a Mercedes SL55 AMG, whatever, I think it is ecological and all these schemes that you have by governments where oh you know if you if you crush your old car we give you 5000 francs uh, on towards a new energy efficient car that's a load of crap because if really ecology is something you're after then it's keep your old cars drive them as long as you can and try to drive less so go more on foot use a bicycle use a bicycle and um don't go everywhere by car. That's way more ecological because, as I say, a car that doesn't drive anywhere doesn't create any emissions. So you see, the reason why I don't buy new cars is because I'm conscious of our environment. And after the long tangents we've been on this video, I think this is a good place to stop. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please comment down below. Tell me what you think about buying old cars versus buying new cars. What are your personal preferences? Why do you do what you do? I'm very interested in reading your comments. And um, anyway, this is over. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye. I try my best to make it look the same, but I filmed a part of this video yesterday and another part today. I even wore the same jumper to make it look all the same. And why? You might ask, well, I had to refilm a part because my camera shut down. Because I'm filming on an amazing camera that shuts down after half an hour. And I kind of didn't check the time and forgotten. And when it shuts down, it makes a sound that's almost inaudible. So I filmed about 20 minutes of nothingness because the camera wasn't filming. And so I had to repeat it today. So the low effort video became slightly higher effort but i still think it's okay and i think the sharp-eyed viewers might have spotted the fact that i'm wearing a different watch because it's a different day today i helped a friend work on his car and for that i like to wear my seiko